Potentiometers are a little tricky in that even though they work very well, they're low tech, they do require some prep. You just can't take a dry tensiometer like we have right here, take the plastic off it and stick it into the ground and expect it to work. Basically what a tensiometer consists of is a ceramic tube, a plastic column that's filled with water, and when you insert that into the soil, the water in the ceramic cup is going to, or the ceramic cup is going to be placed in intimate contact with the soil and it's actually going to form a continuum of the pore spaces in the soil so that as water is removed from the soil, the water in the column is going to move out by capillary action into that soil column and exert a negative pressure or vacuum pressure on your gauge which is going to give you a reading, okay? So to prepare a tensiometer, you have to fill it with the solution. Uh, distilled water is recommended, again, because the ceramic cup is porous. You don't want to use, you know, poor quality water that might have high salts or mineral content because that's eventually going to plug up your ceramic pores. And at first, what you're going to see is a lag time between irrigation and actual reaction of your gauge. So if you have a good, clean ceramic cup, you're going to get a pretty fast reaction between when water is, you know, removed or introduced and what you see on your gauge. Um, you need to keep, fill that up. You need to make sure you exhaust any air. And you can see we did this yesterday. There's still a few air bubbles in there. Um, so really what we need to do is open this up and pull a, pull a vacuum on it, which will help exhaust that air. Um, you prepare to fill out the tensiometers, okay? And basically all of that is, is it, it's really just a dye that you put in there that helps you to see the water. Exactly. This is the dye, and then you load it, and you place it. Right. Basically, it's taking the bubbles out of the tensiometers once you place the water. And you may have to do this, you know, one or two, three times before you actually insert this in the soil. It also gives you a check. Once you establish, it's a little hard to do with, it's a lot easier to do when you have a, a bucket and then you're not standing up like this. But what you want to see too, this gives you a check as you pull the vacuum. And as this rise up to 20 or 30, you should see 20 or 30 here. And that's a good way to check your tensiometers. If you have old tensiometers, if you're not getting the same reading here and here, something's wrong. You may have a gasket that's uh, worn out and it's sucking air. Um, you may have a plugged ceramic cup. So you want to be able to see that what you're seeing here and what you're seeing here is the same. Same pressure. Okay. And if you're not, then you have a problem. You really can't repair it. I mean, you can replace gaskets. You can. If this ceramic cup gets dried out, or excuse me, uh, mineralized, sometimes you can take a little bit of sandpaper and sand it off, take some soapy water, clean it off, and, you know, renew it a little bit. But once that goes bad, and you can't get this to match this, toss it and get a new tensiometer. The other thing that's important with the tensiometer, is when you insert it in the soil, you have to have good contact. So again, you just can't take a post hole digger and dig a hole and jam it in there. It's not gonna work because you're not gonna get good contact. You wanna use something like a soil probe with a half inch diameter for the smaller, the, the six inch tube. This would be actually adequate. You just bore down, make yourself a six inch hole pour a little water in there so the, the soil is wet, and then water it in so you actually have contact. Another way to do it for the, the longer probes, get yourself a half inch PVC pipe, just hammer it into the ground, make yourself a half inch hole, same diameter as your tensiometer. And again, it, it is important though to 
introduce some water in the hole before you insert it. You never want to force the tensiometer because if you do, you can damage the ceramic cup or, or uh, break the seal. And then you want to basically, you know, wiggle it in there and get, and then take some water. It's very easy to do it when you are in a vegetable field because especially at the beginning of the season because your soil moisture is very high for transplanting. So it doesn't take any effort to insert the tensiometers. If you don't have these tools, um, you should not just insert the tensiometers without this tool, but if you have to do it in a plastic bed, for example, you need to make sure that you remove the plastic from the bottom of the ceramic tip, okay? You want to water it in so you establish that soil moisture contact. Um, and that's, it's really simple and that's, you know, basically the, the basis of it. Um, you do need to be careful. You, if you're going to install them, you need to put them in a place where equipment or people are not going to, you know, be banging into them because if you bang that and break that soil water contact, again, your tensiometer is not going to work. You need to check it periodically because water levels in there go down. If you see the water down in your cap about a half inch, you have to replenish the water. Or again, you could lose the vacuum and you're not going to get a true reading. So you know, Another thing is um, when you have a small plants, transplants, don't put the tensiometers in between the plants because the plants are going to get really big and then you're not going to be able to have a good reading unless you cut a little bit or you have multiple tensiometers. But if you're gonna have one, just put it a little bit away from the center of a tomato or in a strategic place where it's not gonna get, uh, it's gonna be difficult to read for someone that is taking that data. And just a little on care and maintenance, at the end of the season, you just don't wanna take your tensiometer, put them up dirty and leave water in them all summer. Um, they're going to go bad on you. What you want to do is scrub off that ceramic cup with, again, a mild soap solution, um, drain them, and store them dry if you're storing them for long term. If you're storing them just for a few days, you know, and going to put them right back out in the field, just wash that cup off again, you know, clean it up, and stick it in a bucket of water, and it'll stay for a couple days that way.